All right, so our months of hard work have paid off and um, I'm quite happy with the results that we have achieved so far. So our first success was eliminating the sticky spot at the crossover point between two fields. So we have all south pointing out here and all north pointing out there and our um, what we call our vertical magnet or neutralizing magnet in the center there with north on this side south on that side pulls this south field in tight and this north field in tight tight giving us a void in the middle that was our first success um, as you can see our field void here so that was good but that void wasn't big enough to do what we wanted to do um, or do what we needed to do. So I've now moved over onto this one um, after a lot of printing and that. And as you can see, there's another one there um, that I tried, which is not so good. Uh, but all we have done is added another magnet in between our two arrays and this has given us a very large field void as you can see here which is what we wanted um, so as we would know um, from our previous testing and any other situation um, if we went straight from the north field to a south field without our neutralizing blocks in the center we get a serious cogging effect um, at the center as you do because we want that we uh, have a situation where our uh, temporary permanent magnet um, becomes a bridge between the two fields okay so those two are opposing so if we put that down there uh, where we have the north and the south the fields want to be bridged and that is exactly what our steel keeper is doing and it is extremely strong which gives us an extreme cogging effect in the middle which is exactly what we didn't want so we alleviated that problem with this situation here but that wasn't quite good enough so now we've gone to you know, two neutralizing magnets um, which could be one larger magnet and that has given us a very large field void in the middle which was the missing piece on our rotor I've glued one of these 10 by 10 steel blocks in the rotor as you can see here and I've taped or glued some of our magnetic field viewing film which I cut out of there I did buy two so and that one still works fine um, and I've put this on here so we can actually see this temporary permanent magnet being switched on and off and it does that without there being any cogging or you can just feel it and that is more so because the two center magnets are sticking out slightly higher than our stator magnets probably by about two mil by the look of it um, joys of 3d printing you can make the holes the measurements what they should be and when you print you get some overlap um, so I had to I will have to minus uh, a little bit off each hole to get them to sit even but nonetheless uh, it has done exactly what we needed it to do and that is switch this on and off when we needed it to switch on and off so I will put our rotor on here and you're probably not going to see it very good from this angle so after we go through everything I will put the camera down low here on the deck so you can see clearly what's happening but um, we can see the magnetic field is off there switched on there and with no serious cogging like we normally get um, so that was the missing piece to a working motor so also um, just so 
you know it's happening there will be a stator around the outside uh, which will have our ferromagnetic blocks in that stator uh, now all this once it's all printed and all with correct sizes we're then going to move on to making our own iron powdered cores and I will just make up some uh, dies or molds uh, and mix a very small amount of two-part epoxy and fill those molds up put in the press and press them together extremely hard uh, so if we get a good compact uh, iron powder core so that's later on down the track uh, first we got a lot of precision printing and that to do and measurements so here's how it's going to work we're going to have a number of these around uh, that yet to be determined what's going to work best and give us a very smooth operation but um, of course the more the better but uh, our ferromagnetic outer cores will sit like so and our temporary permanent magnet's going to enter the field and turn on there and be pulled towards that core it then has to switch off while it's still within the core the outer core and then once it's switched off it's free to leave that core without being pulled back towards it so we get a unidirectional force in that it's pulled into the core when it's switched on and free to leave the core once the magnet is switched off uh, now the hard bit was getting that magnet to switch on and off without any cogging effect at all there um, as you can see but you get a screwdriver there's there's nothing there no cogging whatsoever so um, I'm extremely happy about that of course we get the cogging effect at the start and the end but it won't during uh, once we've finished the motor so here's where all the uh, precision measurements and machining and printing and all that happens so we're going to have this array right around the whole inner stator or a magnetic stator uh, so the next um, step in this array is two more of these magnets here on end but opposite poles around so the fields will be alternating and there will be four um, for the first version uh, proof of concept will have four um, alternating fields and four neutralizing blocks uh, of course this will end up being a lot smaller and this is where the precision measurements come in and trial and error on the printer um, we don't want any gaps between the magnets they must fit exactly all the way around as we see here and then what I will do is get some of that iron powder uh, mix it up and print up a ring that fits snugly over all the magnets um, and put the iron powder between each gap we'll then put the inner stator in our milling machine and mill them perfectly round with our sanding wheels here or grinding wheels so as a, is a very round finish we get uh, with no gaps between the magnets and that'll give us a very nice even field and we need to do the same with our rotor blocks um, we'll machine them nice and round when it's finished and that way we can get a very fine tolerance between the magnets and the um, semi-permanent magnets or our temporary magnets and the same must apply for the outer stator with all our blocks in that stator so they will continue on um, so we'll have a block there so the magnet switches on is pulled into that block switches off there free to leave the block and once the magnet switches back on our next block will be here pulled into it switch off and free to leave and so on around the whole motor 
so if we were to have four um, poles here we would then have six blocks on our rotor so that would mean two poles would be coming into the neutral point uh, switching off leaving the blocks two poles would be coming into the field switching on pulling towards the next set of blocks and two poles would be in the center of the field and the center of the blocks so it gives us a very even uh, non-cogging motor so that is what we've got ahead of us um, lots and lots of printing measuring um, trial and error to get the exact um, diameters we need and the exact measurements we need accounting for printer error uh, with this printer it's not too bad within 0 0.1 0 0.2 of a millimeter depending on what filament i use uh, i have noticed for example um, this is just cheap e-sun stuff which i use for prototyping but it prints extremely well in this printer and um so that makes it very good but what it does do is ends up being about 0.2 mil bigger in diameter than what i actually draw up if i use the creality hyper series um, i can get it down to about 0.1 um, so it it's a lot of work to get it exactly right and i need to be able to spend my time full time on this probably for at least the next couple of well i would say for the next couple of months maybe sooner um getting everything exactly right um filling all the gaps between the magnets because unfortunately we can't buy arc magnets um at the moment i haven't found a source that can make arc magnets but we can get to that later once we've got a successful motor so that is what we've got ahead of us so now i'm gonna I'll bring the camera down um, deck level here so you can see clearly that field switching on and off uh, without the cogging unlike our magnetic switches you get uh, for holding things like dial gauges and that you must turn it pretty hard to switch that field on turn it pretty hard to switch it off um, now we won't we just have to touch it there's no force to switch that field on and off which is what we needed all right so i'll bring the camera down and i'll show you the field switching on and off okay so this is just um a 10 by 10 steel block i cut out of a bit of plate and as you know um it has no field lights a bit of a pain i know sorry about that but no field whatsoever to be seen if we take our permanent magnet wants to stick to me we now see a clear field so our steel block has now became become a temporary permanent magnet here we can see the field coming into the array is switched on go around switched off completely nothing on the film whatsoever switch back on off on that is what we've been looking for all right guys so um that's where we're at we are ready now to make the actual motor um, although we now know what we got to do uh, getting it all precise is going to be the time consuming part but we now have a means to make it work thanks for watching